One of the greatest catastrophes of Jewish history was the destruction of Spanish and Portuguese Jewry in the 14th and 15th centuries. By the 14th century, the Jewish population of Spain and Portugal numbered in the hundreds of thousands, and Jews were integrated into all areas of society. The major turning point came in 1391, when murderous anti-Jewish rioting erupted in many Spanish cities. Frenzied mobs presented their Jewish neighbors with a choice, convert or die. Thousands of Jews were brutally murdered for refusing to convert to Christianity. Countless others converted in order to save their lives and were referred to thereafter as the conversos. Then in 1478, the notorious Spanish Inquisition began persecuting the conversos, punishing those they suspected of practicing Judaism in secret. An untold number of conversos were arrested and tortured and many were publicly burned at the stake. In the spring of 1492, the Spanish monarchs, Ferdinand and Isabella, expelled the Jews from Spain. When the Jews were expelled from Spain, they either stayed and converted to Christianity, or they left Spain proper and traveled to North Africa and elsewhere. Many, many, many moved to Portugal. Portugal was close, and they uh, settled there very nicely. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the king of Portugal, Manuel I, was put constantly under severe pressure by Ferdinand and Isabella to do to his Jews precisely what they had done to theirs. Manuel did not want to do that. They were far too important to his economy, to the administration of his kingdom, and to all other kinds of other things. But King Manuel was not able to resist the diplomatic and political pressures indefinitely. In 1497, he hit upon a solution. He closed the ports and he declared that all Jews have to leave or they have to convert to Christianity. Now, since the ports were closed and the borders to Spain were closed, there was nowhere for the Jews to go. And there are records of priests going through the Jewish areas of Lisbon and elsewhere with huge barrels of holy water and wholesale sprinkling them with holy water and saying, you're all Christians. In other words, he effectively converted the entire Jewish community at one blow and declared that they're all Christians. The majority of the Jews in Portugal lived outwardly as Christians, but kept Judaism in secret. Unfortunately, however, the tentacles of the Inquisition were soon unleashed and this brought about terrible persecution. In the ensuing years, thousands of families succeeded in escaping Portugal to begin life anew elsewhere. Few 15th century Jews could consider themselves unscarred by the horrors. Many Jews were first-hand victims, having run through the flames on their way out of Spain and Portugal. Others, including Rabbi Eliyahu Kapsali, experienced the horror secondhand. Rabbi Kapsali was born on the Mediterranean island of Crete, then known as the Kingdom of Condia, in 1483. His father, the chief rabbi of Condia, mobilized a relief network for the waves of Jewish refugees fleeing the Iberian Peninsula. The young Eliyahu was deeply affected by their tales of unspeakable horror. Rabbi Kapsali set his hand to the quill. He viewed the unexplainable evils as a backdrop to the greatest and most enduring salvation, that of the Messianic era. So you find among Spanish and Portuguese Jews in Spain and Portugal, and certainly among those who were exiled, a, an intensification of, the, of a sense of the coming of the Messiah and a yearning for the coming of the Messiah because of the travails that they had under, undergone under the Inquisition, um, in the expulsion, and this whole sense that the world had turned upside down. Rabbi Kapsali noted that Jews were now more concentrated and less spread out, and he viewed this as a preparatory phase for the ingathering of exiles. In fact, the majority of Spanish and Portuguese refugees had resettled in the Ottoman Empire, which governed the land of Israel sparking an unprecedented wave of return to the Jewish homeland. For these reasons, many Jews believed that all the arrows were pointing to the imminent redemption of the Jewish people. Perhaps the catastrophes of Spain and Portugal were the prophetic sufferings 
that were said to precede the Messianic age. But is the Messianic redemption a fate to wait for with folded arms? Or does it require determined action at an opportune time? The Jews of the 16th century were divided over this dilemma. One rabbi was particularly convinced that Jews had to seize the opportunity. Rabbi Shlomo Mocho was born in Portugal in the year 1500. His family was forcibly converted to Christianity, and as a child, he was neither circumcised nor educated in Judaism. And he was a very talented individual who ended up serving in a very senior capacity in the service of Manuel I, the King of Portugal, who actually brought about the forced conversion of the Jews of Portugal. Despite having a highly accomplished position at the royal court, Shlomo Mocho was eventually inspired to discover Judaism. He fled to Italy, where he fully re-embraced the religion of his ancestors, a capital offense in Christian lands in those days. He became a prominent rabbi and teacher of Kabbalah, but his brilliance and charisma also curried favor with Italy's aristocrats and rulers. In 1532, Rabbi Shlomo traveled to Germany to meet the emperor, Charles V, on a most ambitious mission. He hoped to convince Charles to supply military arms to the Jews of his empire and enable them to wage war against the Ottoman Turks, who then ruled the Holy Land. Charles stood to gain from such an endeavor, since this would greatly weaken his most worrisome foe. Yeah, this is the era in which the Ottoman Turks are developing their empire. The Ottoman Turks ultimately will almost conquer Europe. So the Ottomans were a very serious threat and Christendom was very concerned about them. In fact, Charles had only recently received information that the Ottoman army was readying for war against him. Shlomo Mocho thought that Charles would welcome a Jewish alliance against the Turks. News of Mocho's intentions reached the ears of the German Jewish community before Mocho's arrival. One famous rabbi, the legendary Yosul Rosheim, paid close attention. He was best known for intervening on behalf of Jews throughout Christian Europe, especially in the areas of the empire. So whenever there was a blood libel or whenever there were agitations against Jews, whenever Jews were in danger, he would swoop in and he would uh, try to help them. Yosul of Rosheim saw danger in Shlomo Mocho's plan to ask Charles V to arm the Jews of his empire. Charles V, in a sense, was even more religious and more fanatic than the Pope. Uh, that's not a big surprise. His mother was a woman named Juana la Loca, Joanne the Mad, who was the daughter of none other than our friends Ferdinand and Isabella. He was like his grandparents on steroids. So all he could see when he met Shlomo Molcho was a renegade Jew. Rabbi Yosu tried to dissuade Molcho, but the latter was determined to press forward nonetheless. When he came before the emperor, Rabbi Shlomo was given the same choice his family had faced before he was born. And now, in the moment of truth, he chose the Jewish faith once again. Although his bold plan died with him, its underlying messianic motivation did not. The disagreement between Rabbi Moho and Rabbi Yosul of Rosheim highlighted the great debate of that era. Many Jews viewed the catastrophes of Spain and Portugal as the prophetic sufferings that were thought to precede the Messianic age. The question was how active a Messianic role must the Jewish people take when they sense that the time is ripe for redemption. For the likes of Rabbi Yosul of Rosheim, bettering one's personal service of God through study, prayer, and good deeds was all that was required. But for the likes of Rabbi Moho, this was allowing the opportunity for the Jewish redemption to slip away. God had signaled to the Jews through world events that if they were to rise up and make their way home, he would crown their efforts with messianic success. This debate continued to ferment in rabbinic circles. Then, in 1538, just five years after Rabbi Moho's martyrdom, the contention erupted furiously in the controversy over rabbinic ordination. <laughs>